Good evening to all my wonderful viewers out there and welcome back to another video. In tonight's video, I'm going to be discussing the third birthday of the channel. Now, I would just like to start out this video by saying uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and a wonderful Boxing Day. I hope you spent it either with family or however you spend your Christmas and Boxing Days normally. I hope it all went smoothly. I hope you ate too much food <laughs> and enjoyed it all. Uh, I did exactly that. I spent my Christmas and Boxing Day uh, with my family eating way too much food, which I am definitely going to be regretting later on. Going to be looking at all my Japanese clothing to see if I can still fit into my undercover fit into my capital <laughs> after this holiday season but that's what the holiday season is right uh yeah i hope you guys had a wonderful one we're now on to december 27th which doesn't have any significance uh, with any holidays but it has a significance with the channel uh, december 27th marks the anniversary of the channel's creation now i very strongly remember actually creating it on boxing day like i remember coming uh home from my family gathering on boxing day in 2018 and creating the channel apparently i'm wrong youtube says no man you created it on the 27th so i must be remembering things wrong <laughs> So yes, three years ago today, uh, I created the YouTube channel just because I, I wanted an outlet to discuss my love for sneakers, streetwear, and everything that was fashion related as uh, my only outlet at the time was discussing it with my friends. And it was kind of a limited outlet because, you know, it was until they got bored of discussing it with me. <laughs> so I needed more of an outlet. So I decided to come on this platform and see how it, uh, you know, all was and start discussing my love for sneakers, streetwear, fashion, everything to do with it. Here we are three years later and I like to do a little annual video just to summarize, you know, what was achieved in this recent year both in the you know channel's life my personal life my career everything like that uh, and then also to set some goals in this video for next year to you know things that i want to aim for uh next time that we do this video on december 27th 2022 so uh to start off the video i'll be discussing some milestones that we hit uh, on the channel which i think are worth mentioning in 2021 some milestones that i hit in my professional career which i will dive into as well if you guys don't know where i work and everything like that uh, i'll also be diving into some 2021 milestones in my personal life and some 2021 milestones for my sneaker and clothing collection and things that i've done in the year to do with all that and then of course i'll be doing the 2022 goal setting versions of all those categories as well so it's probably going to be a bit of a long video because i'll have a lot to say about all those different things <laughs> but yes lots to discuss lots of milestones to discuss for 2021 and lots of goals to set for 2022 uh yeah let's get into it guys uh let's start talking about some of the channel milestones that you guys helped me reach in 2021 so what are some milestones that we hit uh, on the channel in 2021? Well, one of them that I'm really, really proud of, that I'm really, really happy with, uh, that actually happened during my birthday month of May, uh, was that we hit 3,000 subscribers. And I know in the grand scheme of YouTube things, that's not a lot. It's basically nothing. <laughs> but again, if, if, if we like sit here all day looking at all these different channels and comparing the subscriber milestones, we're going to make the channel feel pretty inadequate. But I still wanted to highlight it because it was a huge milestone for me, something that I never thought would ever happen. And I'm just really, really happy that it did happen this year. I'm really excited to see the channel, you know, constantly growing. More of you guys in that comment section below joining in. It's awesome stuff. Uh, yeah, to hit 3,000 subscribers meant a lot. And it was definitely something I had to highlight in this video. And something that I'm constantly trying to thank you guys as much as possible when we're hitting all these newer milestones and everything like that. It's crazy stuff, guys. Thank you so much for the continuous support for helping me reach 3,000 subs this year. I'd love to hear from you guys if you have any vague idea of like when you subscribe to the channel. Let me know in that comment section below. When did you subscribe to the channel? What was the subscriber count at that time? I would love to see like a timeline of people at the different subscriber milestones. Now, another subscriber milestone that's worth mentioning, one that 
isn't as significant as, as 3,000, but it's definitely one that's worth mentioning because I was talking about it for a while. Uh, it's us hitting 3,200 subscribers. So uh, very much in December, I was constantly asking you guys if we could hit the subscriber milestone of 3,200 subs. And you guys always deliver. You guys are absolutely crazy. We managed to hit that milestone before the end of the year. And I was kind of worried. I was like, oh, damn, we've got like 10 subs until in less than 10 days till the end of the year. Like, can we do it? It was no stress for you guys. <laughs> you came in and we smashed it. Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy to see, let alone 3,000, but then 3,200 it's it's that growth man it's it's crazy to see that constant growth uh i'll always be i'm always going to keep trying to improve for you guys but to constantly see the growth is crazy i want to thank you guys so much for helping me reach 3200 before the end of the year and even more so 3205 because that was our last milestone that i set for the channel uh we hit that we hit that as well so i should probably come out and say i want to thank the public and private subscribers like i always do because <laughs> we hit 3205 subscribers as well so thank you guys thank you public subscribers thank you the private subscribers that want to hide their names as well i wouldn't be here without you i wouldn't be hitting these milestones without you and just quickly let's see if we can hit 3210 subscribers before the end of the year just to set another milestone in the middle of the video <laughs> see if we can hit that uh, subscriber milestone before 2022 that i mean no i'm not going to do another video just to highlight that but we'll discuss it in a future video if we do hit that milestone but hitting all these milestones guys it means a lot and i wanted to highlight it in this video it wouldn't be possible without you guys and i just wanted to say thank you so much for it now one that i don't usually highlight a lot is the views mainly because it's i mean I, I, of course it means something to me but the overall views of the channel isn't something that i try and like strive to get the highest number for and things like that but yeah we did hit a pretty big number just before the end of the year i got an email from it from vid iq saying congratulations about it it was pretty crazy but we hit uh 950 000 views collectively across all my uploads must be the quantity over quality <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of people get that amount of views in just one video but across all the videos on the channel we hit uh 950,000 views which is pretty bonkers like that's crazy to think that well, I'm like that close to a million views collectively that means we're probably gonna hit it in 2022 just from like like even if I didn't upload a lot in 2022 which of course is not gonna happen it would just like build up to that amount it's it's a crazy thought to think about guys but yeah i again thank you to everyone that's viewing a lot of the content out there i can't believe we hit 950,000. i mean again i'm not keeping track of it but when like when i was looking at the date creation of the channel today it just says it right there so i was like well it's right there i gotta highlight it right <laughs> so yes guys uh thank you for constantly watching 950k is not something to overlook uh, crazy stuff I hope that we can hit a million sometime soon but that'll obviously be something that I'll be talking about later when I talk about the 2022 goals of course for the channel honestly uh, as much as like I love hitting uh, like higher and higher subscriber milestones something that's more meaningful to me that I wanted to highlight that we achieved this year was just actually just growing like a bigger community that I got to know uh, in the comment section below guys because uh, you know you could have people subscribing all the time and uh, they don't really talk in the comment section too much which is totally fine like I'm one of those on you know basically every single YouTube channel that I watch I don't comment a lot of the stuff but to get to know some of you guys and you know like what you're picking up this week from upcoming releases and just like your thoughts on a lot of the pieces that I'm picking up I don't know it was just nice to see a lot of regulars and to grow a bigger community of regulars in 2021 it was nice to have more than the amount in 2020 to see that grow as well into a new amount and a higher amount in 2021 it's awesome getting to know some of you guys in the comment section below you're wonderful people uh it's a good time and hopefully further down the track more of you will join us again something i'll discuss later 
but I wanted to thank you guys for, I guess, the growth in the regulars in the comment section below. Uh, you guys are awesome, and I love having a chat with you guys in the comment section below in any of the videos that I upload. So uh, thank you so much for the constant engagement and uh, just, just being there all the time in that comment section below. Now, one thing that I have to highlight uh, that I did a lot on the channel in 2021, which I mean, it could be taken as a negative or a positive. It depends on your attitude towards fashion. Um, I would say that in this past year, I have been more of a consumer in the fashion space, on especially on my channel, than a creative. I would say personally. I mean, you may disagree with me. Uh, you know, that's that's a conversation that could be had. But uh, what I mean by that is that more of my content is more towards the consuming side of fashion you know the latest drops what i've been picking up things like that and have it's definitely uh the brakes have been put on the creative side of it like uh you know styling things like that um that's purely just because of my uh work life my work life uh, has caused me to have very limited time for the channel so i've mainly been dedicating any like minutes or hours that i have for the channel to covering upcoming releases and what i've been picking up um would i love to do more creative sided uh fashion and styling stuff for the channel i'll get into that later but it was just an observation that i wanted to bring up again not necessarily a negative one it all depends on how you feel about that but yeah definitely something that i noticed this year you guys seem to like it. Maybe more of you would prefer the other side of it, being more creative, showcasing styling, things like that. I'll just have to see in 2022, you know, with my workload and everything like that. But it was an observation that I wanted to make in this, uh, you know, channel highlights and uh, achievements that we did this year. Just something that I wanted to mention there. And probably the last thing that I wanted to mention to do with the channel and everything that I've done with it in 2021 here. Uh, if there's anything that you guys feel like I've missed out on, like a milestone or anything like that in 2021 that I should have mentioned, definitely let me know in the comment section below. But we'll move on now to uh, some things that I did in my professional career in 2021. Um, I don't know. I mean, these may not seem like as big of highlights to you guys, but these were some things that meant a lot to me. Uh, at the start of the year, I was working part time. Uh, part-time for the federal Australian government. Uh, if you guys didn't know, I work an office job for the Australian uh, federal government. I won't say particularly which branch because they're kind of a bit iffy about, you know, that being displayed in uh, anyone's public life. But uh, yeah, to put it quite briefly, a office job in the Australian federal government, which I'm loving. I'm, I'm honestly loving it. It's an awesome gig. I love the people that work there and working part time. Uh, that gave me a lot of freedom to be able to come home because it was six hours a day and then work on uh, the YouTube channel. It was a really nice outlet to uh, come home to after work. Uh, and then towards the end of the financial year of the 2021 Australian financial year, which is uh, the 30th of June, because we finish our financial years halfway through the year, uh, halfway through the calendar year, I should say. Uh, I was then offered a full-time position from July onwards, uh, basically doing the exact same work that I used to do, but just in a different uh, branch name, I would say. Same work, a different title, basically. Uh, Full-time work, that added an extra stress this year, but also came with extra pay, obviously. Uh, it, it unfortunately did cut into my YouTube time. Uh, I'm obviously working full-time. It's no longer six hours a day, it's eight. <laughs> and that does, like, it really does come into your time because it's two extra hours. It drains you. But uh, I am enjoying the extra pay. I'm not actually spending the extra pay on more clothing, surprisingly. I oh, know that that's a shock. That should be the that should be the big achievement we're highlighting here. <laughs> no, yeah, the extra cash that I got from going uh, part time to full time, I was actually putting into my investments into the stock into the U.S. stock market and stuff like that. I don't want to go into that too much because it probably bores a lot of you. But uh, yeah, I did that. And it, yeah, it, it has been hard staying motivated sometimes when going to full-time work, when really just chucking all that money into the US stock market, you're not really seeing the reward of those extra hours. But 
I'm sure it'll all pay off in the end, I guess. But yeah, full-time work, that was uh, a big change from July onwards. And maybe there's a pinpoint that you could find. Maybe you could go back to videos at the end of June before, and maybe I'm a lot more energized. And then July onwards, I'm just a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> there could be a correlation there, but that that was definitely a professional career uh, highlight that I wanted to mention in this video. And maybe it, um, you know, filled you guys in a little bit. Maybe you guys don't know where I work and didn't know uh, anything about me there. And maybe that's given you some more insight there. But uh, those were definitely some milestones that I wanted to bring up about my professional career that I did in 2021. And I guess the final one that I want to mention is, is that way back in 2020, uh, I was working under a different branch. I know it's really hard when I'm not giving you specifics, but uh, yeah, 2020 working in a different branch, 2021 part-time working in a branch over here. And then in halfway through 2021, I moved to again, a different branch, a third branch. In 2021, more specifically right towards the end of the year, I applied for uh, a same level position in the first branch that I was in in 2020. And I made it to the shortlist, which I'm really grateful for. Uh, the shortlist, unfortunately, doesn't guarantee you a job. It just means that you're, I guess, in the, I don't even know how many people it is, but in the, uh, you know, top however many people to receive an offer for the next available position. So I'm actually quite happy with that because as much as I love branch three at the moment, I loved the work in branch one because it was more, I guess, client focused and you, I know, I guess dealt with clients more personally. I don't really know how to describe it too much, but I was enjoying branch one a lot more. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention as my final professional career highlight that I made the short list for branch one. And I really hope that uh, sometime soon they offer me a position there because I would honestly love to go back to branch one but uh yeah at the moment still stuck in full time in branch three no complaints uh it's fueling my love of clothing my love of sneakers so and my investments what what else is there to complain about right <laughs> but uh yeah I, I just wanted to mention that as my final career highlight and if you guys have any like further questions that you want to ask me about my uh you know professional career at all at the moment uh, please chuck them in that comment section below and I will happily answer them for you. Now moving into my personal life, uh, what are some events, goals, milestones that I've hit this year uh, to do with that? Well, <laughs> I hate to start off with one that's like so depressing, I guess. But one of them is, is that um, I've just been tired. So, so tired. Like, I don't even know if I, if it's like... It's probably a mental tired feeling burnt out is probably the most accurate description of it. It's really hard trying to do full time work and also keep up with the latest releases and do a YouTube channel and stuff like that. But I love it like that. That's the worst part is it's not even like I'm being burnt out because I hate doing it. I love this feeling and it's man. Is that worse? Am I just like a workaholic or something? I don't know. It's, it's like is that a bad thing but it is one thing that i guess i really felt in 2021 when as i was discussing in my uh professional career i went from part-time halfway through the year to full-time and even though it was only two hours a day extra it really hit me and i like i i can't imagine if there are people in a, a worse scenario than i am in that are doing like 10 hours than trying to do a youtube channel <sighs> I don't even know how you guys would manage if that is a scenario out there, but the eight hours a day, uh, not on the weekends, I get the weekends off, but the eight hours a day, uh, Monday to Friday, and then trying to juggle YouTube with that and social, you know, a social life and all these other things, burnt out. That's, that's, that's a good way to put it for 2021. I have felt very burnt out. Would I want to change it? I would love to go back to part time and then like continue working with the YouTube channel, but it really cuts my funds. And that's, yeah, I guess that's the really sucky part. Damn, if only I could have the same wages for full time work at part time. <laughs> yeah, ah, oh, man. Um, hopefully in 2022, it changes a little bit. Um, I'll discuss that when I talk about like goals I want to set for 2022. But yeah, definitely this year, something that I just wanted to express on the channel 
is definitely feeling burnt out. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys out there are feeling the same. Maybe it's just like, because the world we're living in at the moment, maybe it's like external forces and it's less so me working in YouTube. Maybe it's just because of COVID and everything like that. But 2021 burnout was real for me. I'm really happy now with this Christmas break at the moment. Uh, it's just like giving me time to like, just relax and things like that. It's been really nice with that. But I did want to just like express that at, at some point in the channel. And I feel like this video was the best video to bring that up. Another kind of depressing one that I want to bring up is that I have been drinking quite a bit more. Well, just like a lot. I'm going to say like, I say quite a bit more like in comparison to previous years, but I would say in general drinking quite a lot, not in like the sense that I'm like at home drinking by myself, but definitely in social gatherings on the weekends and stuff. I've just been drinking way too much guys, way too much. I need to uh, slow my roll up 200% in that scenario. Cause it just, maybe that's like another, another thing adding to my burnout, man. But like I need to slow that down, uh, look after my health a little bit more. But I like, I think saying these goals out loud definitely hits me with the realization that's like, dude, it needs to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> like and like when i saw that article uh i don't know if you guys saw that article it was shared on like all the major oh sorry the study i should sh say that uh, heaps of articles are written about on a bunch of major like news platforms that australia is like the drunkest country in the world hands down fully believe that fully fully believe that like there are a bunch of people in the comment section writing all these things be like no nah, it's got to be this country nah man we are bad we are bad but um i do want to change that personally just so like i'm not lugged in with that with the whole country's crowd <laughs> but i have noticed that i have been part of that country's uh, drunken crowd this year and again maybe it's you know a lot of external stuff like COVID and stuff like that because apart from that not much has changed really like if anything my work life's improved i've gone from part-time to full-time work getting more money and things like that Maybe it is externally. I don't know what to currently put it on, but I just wanted to bring it up. Definitely in 2021, I have been drinking a lot more and I definitely do need to slow that down. But on a more lighter note, because so far in all my personal life things and events and everything that I've mentioned so far, they've all been pretty depressing. <laughs> I have noticed that I have gotten a little bit slimmer, um, mainly because I've been in 2021 trying to cut back on a lot of processed crap. Um, I've been trying to slim down, especially in my legs, because I really want to fit into so much more uh, different clothing and brands. Uh, like, I think that I would love to fit into, absolutely love to fit into, is a pair of Capital uh, Boro jeans. The biggest sizes they do is a 38, and at the moment I'm a Levi's 40 maybe a levi's 38 because honestly the waist size is quite big on me on a 40 right now uh but the problem is that my thighs are really big and a capital 38 is way smaller than like a levi's 501 38 so i would idealistically probably have to be like a levi's 36 to fit into a capital 38 realistically but that is a piece i would love to fit into just like their boro jeans the hippie jeans their flare jeans or whatever you want to call them all those different styles as well yeah and i have gotten a little bit slimmer in 2021 i want to continue that and if i like i was talking about drinking less i feel like if i jumped on that and drunk a lot less i feel like i'd be able to achieve that goal a lot more so i might use that as a motivator to like constantly keep getting slimmer because yeah, I would love to come down to, oh God, if it was even possible, like below 30 digits in my weight, like down to 90 something kilos instead of like a hundred and something like I am now, I could fit into so much more clothing. I probably would feel more confident in a lot more like tighter clothing and stuff like that. Not that that's a big issue, but I could just see so many different outfits working with a slimmer body than what I have at the moment. And I want to keep striving for that. But definitely in 2021, I did want to highlight as like a positive thing. I have noticed I've got a little bit slimmer. Definitely looking to work on that in uh, 2022 as well. And I would like to say in my personal life, I've like gotten a lot more friends this year, even though the like social gatherings and everything has been scarce because of COVID and everything like that. I would say, yeah, I've, I've got, either gotten closer with my current friends or have met new friends as well. I've definitely noticed that in my personal life. And some of them I would love to do vlogs with and stuff like that like that would be 
so much fun to do that. I will mention that in the, you know, goals that I want to hit in 2022 for the channel. But that is something I've definitely considered with some of, either some of my new friends uh, this year or some of my friends that I've become better friends with uh, this year as well. Uh, definitely something that I've put into the I'm definitely tempted to start doing basket. Uh, but yeah, just kind of like a wholesome thing that I also wanted to mention, I guess, in my personal life that I've noticed. And on the financial side, uh, like I mentioned it when I covered my professional career achievements, but one that's affected my personal life quite a bit is I get, uh, my money management. I've, um, I, I don't know if it's just because it's been like a wave at the moment, like it's kind of been like on trend, I guess, to be into the stock market and stuff like that. But I have been investing a large chunk, like a large portion of my paycheck into the US stock market to like get another cash flow source coming in mainly because I would love to cut down on my working hours from part uh, from full time to part time and use that money coming in from the stock market to justify doing that. Uh, but I have noticed that my you know, like my portfolio is doing well, uh, my money management, my bank account has been way better than what it was in 2020 because I got to say in 2020, I was not very good at my, my, my money management at all. <laughs> I was copping way too much clothing, way too many sneakers, everything like that. And maybe you guys have noticed that, that I'm like not copying the latest releases and stuff like that. So maybe from a channel perspective, it's a bad thing, but definitely I'm going to say from a personal life perspective, it's been better. Managing my money has definitely been a better thing for me. Maybe not for the channel, <laughs> but it was the last thing that I wanted to bring up uh, in this section that uh, financially Definitely this year, I have been doing better. I've been wiser with my money uh, and I hope to continue that in 2022. But uh, if you guys have any like further questions or more specific questions about my personal life at all, or, uh, you know, I want to want me to dive further into anything that I mentioned that I did in 2021 here. Um, yeah, hit me up in that comment section below about the personal life questions. I'll try and answer as many as I can there. But uh, we've only got one more section left to highlight for 2022. And that is, of course, my uh, clothing and sneakers uh, and how that's all been going. So now sneakers, clothing, fashion, what's been going on in 2021 in my world, I guess, in regards to all that? Well, I mean, in the sneaker section of it, not a lot. <laughs> like, I've just, just not been coughing a lot. It's just so damn expensive these days. Like, I... I can't even remember the last time I picked up a pair of shoes at retail. Like, it's just, I have not been picking it up a lot in 2021, purely for that reason. Like, five, six years ago, I don't want to sound like some sneaker boomer, but like back in like 2015, 2016, it really was a whole different level. Like, not every single release was botted. It was like the Yeezy releases only, and maybe some Ultra Boost releases. That was really about it. The rest of it was pretty okay. You actually had a chance. Now, the retail is the resale. And it's, yeah, it's an unfortunate uh, current climate, I guess, for the sneaker world. So uh, I did cop a couple things, but not as much as I have in previous years. Um, I've, I've copped way more clothing than I have sneakers. But what can you do when sneakers are running you like 400, 500 bucks a pair, you know? It's pretty rough. Although one thing I do have to say is that this year has been the year of proxying for me at least. Uh, I really got into a Japanese clothing whether that be Capital's take on Vintage Americana or Undercover's uh, various seasons. Really got into Amer uh, yeah Japanese clothing uh, and I've proxied a lot of it from Japan because Japan has a dumb cheap compared to the rest of the world. <laughs> like for real like I'm fully on board for the Japan train. It's like all, all full steam ahead. I love uh, a lot of Japanese designers. I love picking up from a lot of Japanese boutiques. It's just way more, it's just way better price uh, to value ratio than a lot of other brands that uh, I'm buying. Uh, I'm, and saying that though, I haven't dived a lot into European designers this year or American designers this year. So there's a lot that I'm missing out in that whole realm. But I don't know, just at like the price point, a lot of the stuff that I like in, from Japan, it's hitting pretty well. And I think uh, moving forward, it'll probably be the same. But definitely this year, I was on to proxying. I was on to picking up stuff from Japan. 
because it was really hitting from there. And one thing I gotta say that I'm actually quite proud of is that in 2021, I dived into a lot of silhouettes that I wouldn't normally have worn in previous years. Uh, I, this year, I mean, I was diving into turtlenecks, which I haven't worn in previous years. Uh, I was diving into cardigans, which I mean, I only have one of, I've only got that capital one, but I would love to get more. They're just like quite expensive. Uh, I've dived into different outwear silhouettes, different types of jackets and stuff like that. Uh, and just different styles, like, and it's definitely broadened my horizons. And it's definitely something I wanted to mention that I was doing a lot in 2021. Uh, and a good thing, definitely a good thing. Like having a very diverse wardrobe is very good. Uh, it helps but definitely for a lot of different social scenarios and everything like that. Um, I definitely next year, my wardrobe will just keep expanding. I can't help it. I just love collecting clothes and I love wearing, styling them. It's just so much fun. It's just so much fun to wear and collect clothes. But uh, yeah, I had to mention as my last thing for um, my the clothing and sneaker world of 2021. This year, I have dived into a lot of different silhouettes in the clothing aspect, but not so much the sneaker aspect. Goals for the channel. Well, I think one of them quite obviously has to be 3,500 subs. <laughs> if we've hit 3,200, 3,000. That, I mean, maybe I should be a little bit less optimistic and say 3,250 will be a nice one, <laughs> which it would be. I'd love to hit that. Uh, I'd love to hit 3,500 next year. If possible, 4,000. That would be crazy. That would be absolutely crazy to hit that milestone. Yeah, that I, I, it, it just seems so far away, but I, then maybe towards the end of next year, we may actually hit it. I don't know, but uh, it would be a crazy one to hit. I would be happy with any three of those milestones, 3,250, 3,500, 4,000. Uh, just seeing it constantly grow bit by bit is just awesome, but those would definitely be some milestones I would love to hit next year. Of course, hitting a million total views would be sweet. Uh, I know that one's actually probably closer than the 3,250. <laughs> or maybe not, actually. Maybe we'll hit that before we hit the 1 million total views. But yeah, that would be crazy to hit that. Uh, it would feel very weird only having under 5k subs, but hitting a million views, like in total amount. That'd be kind of strange. But the internet works in weird and mysterious ways and Hey, if we hit a million subs, uh, sorry, a million views in, in total before any of those subs, uh, you know, milestones that I want to hit next year, it is what it is, but I would definitely love to hit that milestone uh, at, at some point in 2022. Uh, and of course, uh, getting to know more of you guys. I think uh, having a more, uh, a, a bigger fan base or a big, uh, it, it, it's weird to say fan base, honestly, a bigger uh, regular, uh, I guess, amount of people in the comment section uh just to like have a chat with you guys and all the latest videos that i upload everything like that i think that would be really nice uh like hitting all those subscriber milestones if like the community in the comment section below just expanded by five or ten people i would feel uh that would be an even bigger milestone than hitting all those subscriber milestones that i was mentioning because i feel like that's more personal and it's just way more exciting uh talking to you guys in that comment section below than just seeing that number go up you know uh yeah, I, I think that'd be awesome. If we could expand like the regulars community next year, that would be absolutely sweet. And I think this was one that I set last year. I would love to do uh, videos that are more on the creative side, talking about style, talking about um, maybe analyzing collections and stuff. Um, I don't know, less consumer based fashion videos and more creative ones. I, it's just really hard because the creative ones take so much more time and planning and when I'm working all the time it's really hard to fit that in. I don't know how some of the other bigger fashion guys do it. I assume maybe some of them work a lot less because they you know making quite a bit of money off of it but yeah no I, it definitely takes a lot longer but I really want to push myself and put some more time into that. We'd love to do uh, more creative videos over consumption videos and would love to do more vlogs. Like I was teasing at it when I was talking about uh, my personal life and how I've made more friends this year. 
I would love to do vlogs with some of them. The only problem is, is that the state that I live in in Australia is so dry when it comes to fashion related content and sneaker related content. We've got some things that I could definitely do a video or two on, but yeah, it would get uh, pretty dry pretty quickly. Uh, although I could do some videos of just like me hanging out with some of my mates that are into fashion and, I, and you guys could come along for that ride. Uh, if that's something you'd like, definitely let me know in the comment section below. But uh, yeah, no, it'll be, um, we'll have to see. 2022, the new, new year, we'll have to see if that is uh, some content that'll make it to the channel or not. Because <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do some vlogs with some of those fellas, it'd be sweet. But yeah, those are just some milestones that I'd love to set uh, for the channel, for sure. Uh, for next year. Professional milestones that I want to hit in 2022. Uh, well, I was talking about the different branches that I was in. I was in branch one in 2020, got moved to branch two part-time in 2021, and then branch three full-time. Would love to go back to full-time in branch one of the Australian federal government again, but it's really just up to if they have more job opportunities. As I talked about, I'm on the short list, so at least I'm there, but the short list only lasts a year. So I have until like October, 2022 to uh, make the branch to, to, you know, get offered a position for branch one. I would love to go back. It would just be, it, it was one of my favorite positions. It's probably my favorite job that I've done so far in my working career. I'd be really awesome to go back to that. Um, Ideally, I would love to go to part-time work, but I don't have the revenue to support that. <laughs> That's why I need to work full-time and invest that money so then I can start working part-time instead of full-time. And yeah, you guys, you guys know what it's all about. Maybe buy less clothing and buy more stocks, you know? <laughs> buy more assets that give me more money. Yeah, no, I would definitely love to do that. Ideally, like, oh man, if it was possible. If somehow I just came into a large amount of money and invested it, then I would love to go to like part-time work again or uh, casual work if even, you know, the least amount of work possible. Because I'd love to just focus my time on YouTube and stuff like that, like like dump all my hours of my day into that. But, uh, you know, that's a, that, that, that's a pipe dream. <laughs> I don't know if that's a 2022 milestone. It's more of a pipe dream, but it would be so sweet. It would be sweet to reduce my working hours, but still have the cash flow coming in. Uh, and to be able to do this stuff all the time, it would just be absolutely sweet. Uh, and I reckon that's good. That's probably gonna be the last couple of milestones except for 2022. I, I don't think reducing my working hours would be a realistic one to set for 2022, but you never know. As I said, maybe I'll win the lottery. I never actually buy any lotto tickets, but maybe somehow I'll win. <laughs> then I can reduce my hours next year. But I think that'll be everything I really got to say about uh, my professional career milestones for the next year, for sure. Personal life milestones for 2022, goals and whatnot. Uh, I think the first one is probably just take more leave. Uh, I think maybe like a week off more often would do me some good to just like reduce burnout. And I would love to spend that week that I have off, like maybe every second day, uh, you know, constantly uploading to the channel, but yeah, just chilling, chilling because yeah, it gets a lot. Working full time is tough. Tough, tough geek. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know why I'm complaining. There's a lot of other people in a lot worse scenarios than I am, for sure. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely thinking of like relaxing more. I, I know that's like really vague for a 2022 goal, but I guess like trying to avoid burnout as much as possible. Uh, just so I can be more motiv motivated on the channel, more motiv motivated in the stuff that I love, like doing YouTube and, you know, doing all those other things that I do. Um, yeah, that'll definitely be a big personal milestone for me in 2022. And I talked about it, um, like in 2021, obviously I've been like, I mentioned that I was drinking a lot more uh, in social gatherings and stuff like that. And that's been like a continuing trend over the past couple of years. In 2022, I'd like to cut back or at least uh, like cut back and well, how do I put it? Have more social scenarios that don't revolve drinking. Um, just to like be able to relax more on the weekend, better for my health, um, all those things really. Better for my bank account, it's dumb expensive buying alcohol all the time. Oh my god, especially in Australia with the huge taxes. Oh yo yo, it is dumb expensive. Uh, yeah, definitely something I would love to cut down on and I want to cut down on next year. Uh, and work out a little bit more. I definitely, as I expressed in the personal goals that I was talking about uh, in uh, 2021, how I did get slimmer. I would love to continue that in 2022. Would love to get into skateboarding again and do that as like a hobby on the weekends. 
Uh, just get slimmer. Yeah, I want to fit into those capital jeans, man. Those hippie jeans, those flare jeans. Then I just have to spend like two or three grand on them to buy a pair. <laughs> but it would be sweet. It would be so sick to be able to fit into a pair of those. Uh, that's a lot of weight that I'd have to lose. But that, that, that could be a goal for 2022 for sure. And then I could, yeah, fit into so many other brands uh, and so many other pieces that don't go as big as they do for me. Although in saying that, the main issue that I have with a lot of pieces that... Uh, that I really like isn't generally to do with like width sizing it's more that I'm just like a big fella so it's hard to fit in those pieces because I'm such a big fella so maybe slimming down wouldn't exactly resolve all those but it would definitely make me uh, look a lot better in a lot of the pieces that I have so yeah I guess just slim down in 2022 that'd be another personal goal that I want to set uh, and probably get some more like-minded friends. I know that's kind of a weird one to say, but like more friends that are into fashion, sneakers, and things like that. I feel like that would be of like really great value to me in 2022. Just to have a lot more mates that are into fashion and sneakers. Because like a lot of conversations I have are not centered around that. But it would be really nice to just like be able to vibe with some uh, like-minded individuals. You know, about that. Maybe some of you fellas in that comment section below, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, as I was talking about for the channel goals, having a bigger community in the comment section. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe join some more like online forums, but uh, talking online about the, these things is never the same as like talking in person, you know, geeking out in person about like the latest releases and stuff. Very different in person. Um, so yeah, I'd definitely love to be surrounded by more like-minded individuals uh, when it comes to those hobbies. And the last one is like a personal goal, uh, I would say just keep being like uh more financially um you know i guess uh, managing my finances better i suppose Ma managing my finances better is probably the final goal that i would set is uh yeah just constantly keep investing more get that passive income coming in uh make sure my bank account's healthy looking good uh, that would probably be just something I want to continue in 2022. Something I definitely don't want to uh, revert to how I was in 2020. Definitely keep this 2021 trend going on for that one there. But that's all I really want to set for uh, personal goals in 2022. I'd love to hear what your personal goals are for 2022, guys. Drop them down in that comment section below. Uh, but we'll move into the final section now. What I'm going to be looking to do in the clothing and sneaker world in 2022 talking about sneakers actually for 2022 uh well not even sneakers just like shoes i would love to pick up some military boots um like as stylish as possible military boots because <laughs> they would make military boots my size i have seen them come in my size i want to pick them up because i would love to wear just like turtleneck nice pants banging overcoat and some combat boots you know just some like army boots combat boots maybe some thin ones they would look so nice depending on the color and depending on the silhouette with some overcoats that i got and the vintage stone island one that i have would look awesome with some military boots Ooh, i could see some fits coming together so yeah in 2022 i'd love to maybe divert a little bit from sneakers and see what i can buy at a size us 16 or 17 in the boots world because uh there are a lot of outfits that i'd love to put together that just don't really work with sneakers and would just work really really well with boots so i would love to explore that lane for sure uh when it comes when next year clocks around in next year i'll probably be picking up uh more undercover more capital hopefully some more supreme as well would like to pick up some supreme from previous seasons uh I, I, like i've I, I can't see my style changing drastically anytime soon i haven't gotten on any of the trends any of the gorp core stuff any of the you know arcteryx boys i haven't gone on to that it's that has just never been my thing and if you've been watching my um you know palace videos because palace pumps out a lot of that stuff you guys know that's not the type of stuff that i wear um but i just can't see myself getting around that it's i don't know it, it could look good on me but it's just not my vibe i just you know i don't i don't climb mountains on a saturday do i really want to be wearing that stuff <laughs> and that's like a total wardrobe uh, redo as well because like you got it like it's it, well for me at least because my wardrobe is so different um and of course i would love to showcase that to you guys i definitely should do a video sometime soon of showcasing my entire wardrobe i know a lot of you guys have been asking for it but i definitely should do that uh yeah it's just 
crazy 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 i'll um i reckon as i said i'll be sticking with what i've been buying this year uh would love to get quite a few more capital pieces i've been slacking on the capital game recently uh, and a lot more undercover pieces from their older seasons. Um, I haven't looked into their seasons a lot pre or winter, uh, well, sorry, spring, summer uh, 17. So I'd love to look into the, some more of their archival seasons and see what I could be picking up from there. I just don't know how the sizing is going to be there. So I'm going to have to really dive into the measurements and stuff to make sure some of that stuff fits because it might get a lot smaller and I'm a... Uh, not exactly a small guy for Japanese clothing. <laughs> so we'll have to see, but yeah, I reckon I'll just be picking up the same old regular, regular stuff that I was picking up this year, uh, next year as well. And uh, like this year, I reckon I will be looking to expand uh, into more silhouettes that I uh, just don't have in my wardrobe. So more, you know, different pieces. I don't have any fleece pieces in my wardrobe. So that is a definite, definite change i'm going to be making my wardrobe in 2022 buying some fleece pieces because i have my eyes on so many of them probably do a video on my top five fleeces that i'm looking to cop in 2022 something like that but there are definitely some fleeces that i would like to pick up some solid pieces there uh it really comes down to price because a lot of them are quite expensive classic who would have thought expensive taste <laughs> but uh yeah some of them are really solid hopefully i can pick them up sometime uh next year uh some other silhouettes that i want to dive into maybe cropped stuff um i don't i haven't i don't own any like really cropped stuff like i own stuff that like comes up to the waistline but doesn't go past it like that's probably as cropped as i've got but i would like some pieces that are purely just like chest oriented and maybe just come down a little bit but they do have like the stomach exposed it isn't something that i've dived into a lot um because there hasn't been a lot of stuff that's really appealed to me that's been super cropped like that but there are one or two pieces that i like that are super cropped like that so maybe i should pick those up just to expand my wardrobe you know have different silhouettes and stuff like that floating through it but yeah um that's probably going to be it for my 2022 goals when it comes to the channel professional career personal life and clothing and sneakers uh if you guys have any further questions regarding any of those goals or anything like that uh please let me know in the comment section below and if you have any of your own in the uh you know maybe you have your own channel or maybe just in your professional personal and clothing and sneaker world let me know what your goals are for 2022 i'd love to hear what you've got to say uh, down in that comment section below Whew, that's a very very long video guys oh my god i haven't done one like that for a long ass time but um thank you for tuning in oh my god thank you so much um this is the video to celebrate the third birthday of the channel it was created three years ago and i've been loving every moment of it uh hopefully it will be here for three more years uh, lots to say about what was achieved in 2021 and what I'm looking to change in 2022. Hopefully I can hold myself to it now that I've uh, publicly, publicly come out and said a bunch of these things. <laughs> That's my motivation. That's like, oh, well, I've said it in the public eye. I've kind of got to hold myself to it. But yeah, no, um, very keen for 2022. Oh, you know, always striving and uh, striving and prospering, <laughs> you know, a real ASAP, ASAP vibe, I suppose. But yeah, yeah, really want to... Um, I, all those things all those things that i mentioned for 2022 really want to improve myself in all those ways especially for the channel for you guys really want to do more creative content really want to uh just do some different content in general i uh, want to take the stresses out of life and be able to do that so working less and stuff like that hopefully that can all come together we're just gonna have to see you guys but uh yeah let me know uh just anything you have to say to do with the channel uh, and maybe any suggested content, maybe what you want to see in the channel in 2022, uh, any further questions you have for me, please let me know in that comment section below, uh, you know, exactly that. And maybe something about me that you don't know you want answered or some content you want to see in the channel in the future, let me know down in that comment section below. Of course, if you want me to keep doing more content on the channel, you got to give me those three indicators I'm always asking for. You got to leave a like on this video, a comment in that comment section down below, and the best indicator of all, which is to subscribe to the channel. Uh, as mentioned in this video, I'm trying to hit the new subscriber milestone that I set of 3,210 subscribers before the end of the year. Uh, hopefully with your guys' continuous support, we can reach that milestone 
before the end of the year. We'll just have to wait and see if that's possible. But uh, this was an awesome video, guys. I love doing these types of videos for the end of the year and to celebrate the third uh, anniversary of the channel. It's been awesome. I look forward to seeing you guys next year for the fourth year. And I just wanted to say a big shout out to you because honestly, without you, I wouldn't be here doing the content. I would, I would be very unmotivated to do any further content on the channel if it wasn't for you guys. So it all comes back down to you. Thank you so much for the continuous support on YouTube. It really means a lot. I really love doing it. It's so much fun. Uh, and I guess I'll catch you in the next video, guys. See you then.